Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids. We recently sold this and this and this and this and this. Don't send or me do. an email, send them to her. No, don't email me, please. Email her. I had that on my list. No, we overlapped. Yeah. When I think of the 2010s, I think of like kind of a general time period that lasted from about 2007 from to now. From the recession to, to <laughs> now. the new age recession. <laughs> oh, pretty much. Okay, Doug, thank you for your submission. This is Doug DiMuro, and this is Alanis King. Alanis is an automotive expert. She's appeared in various Let's give publications. Me some credit. Jalopnik, Road yeah. and Track. Everywhere, Donut. I have podcasts. I wrote a book. She wrote a Lots book. of She's things. Real. She's real. She's here in the garage. I today. exist. <laughs> She's literally real. We're, today, we're going to talk about future classics of the 2010s. I love the 2010s. I thought that was a really nice Good time. time. Yeah, cars was a great from time. the 2010s that will one day be viewed as future classics. Classic. Or like, whoa. Not future classics. Right, it'll at be that classics time, they will be just classics. Yeah. This is hard. People ask me. Probably ask you. Like, I had the easiest constant. time with this Doug. <laughs> I didn't think this was hard at all. And Doug's gonna be like, "These are horrible choices." I, I hate it because people are always asking me, and when I'm wrong, people bring up. I got a video like this like 10 years ago, and people email it to me, and they're like, you 10 years ago, you said this would be a classic, and it isn't yet. Doug is like, oh, people email me about this. I'm gonna give them more <laughs> material to email me about. Oh, See you in 10 that's years. A good, that's a good point, but I'm just decided that this well, time, I'm gonna, solve, I'm gonna solve that problem by just being right. You run the show, Doug. You run the show, and, and indeed, you're doing this to yourself. It's true. And He's that's, gonna be that's right. That's been the story of my YouTube channel for 10 you years. You know what? <laughs> If I'm gonna get emails, I'm just gonna dead, like dead oh. face. Okay, Doug, thank you for your submission. And I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna agree or disagree. Okay, this is hard, but I channeled my inner brilliance and I'll give you some of them. I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with the one that I think you're most likely to have done yourself. Oh no, don't do this to me. <laughs> which is, I went into the 2020s, by the way, on the 20 00s a little, because I couldn't remember. Doug, that's not, that, that wasn't the rule. Yeah, I, the rules are nebulous. Future um, classics of the 2010s and the 2000s and the 2020s. That era. <laughs> that okay. era. Okay. You know what? I'll do a, I'll do a surprising one. Okay. Uh, Subaru WRX STI. Nicely kept STIs. Yeah, I can see They that. stopped making them. Yeah. Everyone modded them to a level that is... Yep. You can't come back from. Yep. The people, a lot of those people then crashed them. Yep. There will be, in 20 years, mm -hmm. six remaining this, nice STIs. I'm glad someone else feels this way because the my household has conversations like this all the time. Future classics, which generation of car is going to be the most valuable? We had a conversation recently about Zs. Yeah. Recent Zs. The new Z, yeah. the 370, the 350. And my husband and I very much disagreed because he thought the 350 and 370 would be more valuable than the new Z in the future. And I thought the new Z would be more valuable than those, but particularly the new Z in that yellow paint yeah. and that blue paint with the blue interior. Because the people who buy the one with the yellow paint and the gold calipers and yeah. all that and the blue on blue, they're gonna leave it stock. They're not gonna modify. And Z's get modified. Yeah. So you're gonna have a few examples of perfectly stock cars yeah. offered in highlighter yellow with gold calipers and blue on blue. Right. Especially because that was the launch one, right? Yeah. People know to save those. the launch one. The launch one was the yellow one. Right. Yeah. People know like, oh, it's the spe special one. Yes. Save that. Yes. But the regular ones just get beat. And I think- And we're thinking along the same lines. The here. Japanese cars from this yeah. era, I think, and early Zs though, I think will be valuable. Yes, totally For the totally same agree. sort of reason, everyone has ragged those out. Yes, that's it. They bought them to drive, they drove them. And they drove them. They modded them. them. They put high miles on them. The yes. few that are left, and I think about this because Evos are st early yep. Evos that have been left mm -hmm. stock, which is like four. Cars. Yeah, like literally four, <laughs> literally. yeah are starting to become valuable. No, I appreciate this line of thinking because I think a lot of people don't necessarily use it. Like my husband didn't use it. He was just like, nah, the newsy, not gonna be nearly as valuable. I was like, look at every 350 and 370. Right. Find me a 350 right. or a 370 that hasn't either been just ratted to pieces or modified to be 
like indistinguishable. And those cars haven't even reached their peak. Like when no. I think about the Z32s, the 90s yeah. ones, mm -hmm. those cars are finally starting to take off. Obviously, everybody's seeing the old Dots and Zs are starting to take off. Oh, those are We're starting to take getting off. into this mm -hmm. point where those are they're becoming vintage. And yes. so like the few survivors yes. are special. Now, a lot of people yes. watch this and say, well, that's true of every car, any of the few that survive. But I think the STI is especially unique because yeah. so many will not survive. Because it is a car known for not surviving, just like right. the Z. <laughs> that's like literally known the three, for and the not, 350 and it's not in yeah. a way that Saturns are known for not surviving, which yes. is it will become, it will fall apart. Yes. It is known, this for, is known for not surviving because people will willfully mess with it. Exactly. And that's that was the point I made with the 350 and the right. 370. And even the new Z to an extent. Everybody will modify this thing eventually. Everybody. Yep. And the few that are left over will be extremely valuable because there are none. There of are them. none. There are none. And there will be this nostalgia play at some point for these cars. And you people will go looking for the nice ones. And the interesting thing about nostalgia and cars, and I think why stock cars are so nostalgic, is when you buy a car that has been modified by somebody else, it feels like their nostalgia. Yeah. It doesn't feel like yours. It right. feels like you're taking, you're inheriting something from something from someone else. And that can be valuable, you know, like you can like that. But also modifications do take away from a lot of used cars yeah. because it's someone else's memories right. and someone else's choices. They made these decisions. They wanted to do it to their taste. Exactly. Plus, I don't trust anything that no. anybody no. does. I assume it was installed poorly at yes. night by, you know, over the phone. <laughs> over the phone. They just called up Nissan and they were like, hey, can you help me? And Nissan was like, no, <laughs> no, this is an Apple mind, care. When I see these modded cars, that's how I assume it was yeah, done. Okay. absolutely. What do you got, future class of the 2010s? Okay, I specifically wore a Dale Jr. shirt because this is a car I've spoken with Dale Jr. about and I'm seeing... Dale Jr., and you were chatting about the... I'm seeing if he picks up on the fact Wait, that I'm wearing me, his shirt in guess, this video. Let me guess, let me okay. guess. Go. What are you talking to Dale Jr. about? <laughs> what is he talking to me about? Is um, the question. You got this. 2010s. What would what? Dale Jr. be into? His manufacturer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Z06. No. Uh, no. Think more interesting than that, Doug. The Chevy SS? Yes, there we are. The Chevy SS. I love the Chevy SS. I'm obsessed with the Chevy SS. I think it is the ultimate just sleeper vehicle and i hate to like use such a common term but it's true. no one knows no one what knows. this thing is even the name was like we're gonna what? take a trim level that we've used on 80 other cars and that'll be the name of this one that's great that for works. seo that is great for <laughs> seo <laughs> it's like, so true it's even like... when we sell them on the site it's impossible because okay. <laughs> you type in chevy ss and like 84 camaros and, yes. come up and and seo goes back to like you need someone who knows about search engine optimization because the new dodge Instead of calling it the Challenger, the like electrified yeah. Dodge, they called it the Charger. <laughs> now, what happens <laughs> when that. you Google EV Charger? Right. Do you think a Dodge comes up? <laughs> EV Charger. Oh, man. Where is our SEO? I never thought Where about are that. our skills? Right. <laughs> so, okay. Chevy SS, what were we thinking? And the whole launch and the whole existence of the Chevy SS in America is kind of a situation of what were we thinking? Because this car came from Australia. It was the Holden Commodore, came to America from 2014 to 2017. And the launch of this car and the existence of this car was so confusing because they launched it automatic only. Didn't even bring the manual. The people who buy this car, like on it's purpose. Only enthusiasts. Yeah, on purpose. <laughs> now you can have some people who buy this car like on accident, but they went you, into the dealer, there was a nice sedan. Yes, if you buy this car on purpose, you are most likely going from a manual, unless you just prefer automatics consciously or you can't drive manuals for whatever reason. But you regardless, know? having it yes. auto only, initial, which they did initially, was a wild move. Alienates your entire market. And kind then of. the autos, they were like high spec. They were yes. all very expensive cars. Yes, they were expensive cars and it was just, it was very weird. And then a year in, they go, we're gonna bring you a manual. And everybody was like, awesome, thanks, you finally did it. These cars didn't sell. They didn't sell at all. From 2014 to 2017, I think Chevy sold like less than 13,000 of them. Oh. And the take rate, take rate on the manual was 32%. So there are more automatics in existence in America manuals are tough to find. than like manuals. The CTSVs. And I Google this, I look up this car all the time because I want a Chevy SS. And 
all the used cars are automatic because yeah. the people with manuals are holding on to them. Yeah. It's easier to find an automatic than it is a manual. You know, it's interesting you bring this crap because we've we've sold a bunch of them on the site. The um, they they took off a little. Yeah, I they have noticed, especially they, in the pandemic. They, yes, yes. They, they totally took off a little during yeah. the, right at the start. I've noticed that they've softened a little bit. They have. Yes. I wonder though what happens long term to it. Yeah, I agree with you that it could be a future classic. Yeah. My question is. Is it going to have the same problem it did when it launched, which is that no one really remembers it or thinks about it or has... There's, like, not enough nostalgia. I think it should be a future classic because it was a cool car. Yes. But, like... The nostalgia is a question. No, yeah. I mean, you're right. And I think... But it is rare. It is very rare. And I think the people who know about it will value it very, very highly. And the prices will continue yeah. to climb. Because during the pandemic, those prices shot up. Like, yeah. that car shot up by about $15,000. Yeah, it's so funny because Chevy probably is so annoyed with enthusiasts. The yeah. car was on the market. Nobody bought it. Left the market. It never really got cheap then. No. Like, And now people are paying over what they what yes. they were new. Yeah, because Chevy new was like, why didn't you buy it from us for that? We, yeah. were, <laughs> we were trying to get you. Because <laughs> they, they launched for 48 I think. Something around there, yeah. Yeah, around 48 And, and nice stick are still in that range yeah no exactly and that's what they're selling for and it's like i love the chevy ss i'm obsessed with it um and my buddy dale dale he was like i sold my chevy ss and that was the worst decision ever what does he drive uh i don't actually know what he chevy SS. i've i've been informed that he drives a truck that is a lot of highlighter colors but i don't know what truck it is but if you go in to look in the parking lot, you look for the bright colored truck. The problem is in North Carolina, every parking lot's got a bunch of... Exactly. We're not going to find Dale. But... Okay. All right. My next one is here's, here is okay. similar to your last one and not in the 2010s. Doug, <laughs> what happened to the prompt? It's a Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. Uh, uh, Doug, Doug, that is not even close. That not car even came close. out in 2019 plus four. <laughs> Doug, that is not even close. All right, fine. I'll move on to a different one. But that's no, I think you're true. right. It's true. But <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you one that's real. A real one. Although okay. that is real. By the way, I don't think any of these cars are going to be good investments. I think that someday they will be valuable, but I don't think you should like buy and hold a Chevy SS or an STI. We have the stock we, market will do better. Housing, anything. We have like an asterisk at the bottom of <laughs> yeah. the screen. That's like this is not financial this advice. Do not, not listen these to cars us. Will be desirable, but not like it's not going to like 10x over. Don't buy these cars for this purpose. Don't send or me do. an email. Send them to her. No, don't email me, please. Email her. No. Alanis at Alanis. No. Alanis. That's exactly my email. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Email that. All right. Next car. This is true. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so. Toyota Land Cruiser at the end of production. So yeah. I will caveat this. Production ended in 21. Admittedly, <gasps> a little too late. But Dog. but even, even the 19s, the 18s, et cetera. Yeah. If you're looking at what's happening to the Land Cruiser market with the 90s ones yep. and the 80s ones and the 70s yep. ones, you're watching all those things shoot up. This car is out of production. It's mm -hmm. a very special vehicle that yep. nobody makes anything like it anymore. Yeah. And I think that that's always a big factor for a car Absolutely. becoming cool and desirable. And yeah. I think that those late Land Cruiser models, I don't expect them to take off in value, but I do expect when we're 60, they looking back and being like, we should have bought one of those and put it in a warehouse because now it's worth $200,000. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I think I, I think that's one that a lot of people actually wouldn't think about when presented with this prompt because when you think of Land Cruisers, you think not 2010s. Yeah, that's right. You think of the older ones, but that's what you have to get ahead of when right. it comes to future Which classics. Which is, they, they, sales came to a trickle. They were hard to find. It was exactly. the end of this era. Ooh. And that's exactly it. Like you, yeah. That's exactly what you have to think about. Is like, yes. this car wasn't popular in period, but it's cool. It is. And that will make it, I think, rise. And I've that's... noticed, I wish I'd bought a Land Cruiser Heritage. Mm -hmm. I've noticed these 80 series 40th anniversary editions, which is sort of the heritage version of that model. Yeah. Those have become very desirable, very valuable cars. And that will happen to the late, ver late well yeah. kept. And the other thing about Land Cruisers is people buy them to use. They, they, they buy them to use. Horses, they tow horses, yep. they go off road, etc. Kids, huge miles. Yeah. So the ones that survive, again, will be like really desirable. Doug's financial advice is buy a car and do not use it. Do not use it. Especially a Land Cruiser because it gets four miles per gallon. So yeah. if you do realize the financial gain, you will have spent all of your money on fuel. The whole yeah, it won't matter at all. Won't matter. No, I think that's very interesting. I like that pick. Thank I wouldn't you. have thought of that. All um, right, what do you got? What do you got next? You're either gonna like this, or we're just gonna have a situation where you look at me. <laughs> Is it gonna be the Kia Carnival? No. Okay. No. No, Doug. Okay. 
You ready? Aston Martin Signet. Yeah, I agree. Too. Easy. Oh, I'm so glad. Aston I Martin Signet. So I want one so bad, but we can't import them yet. You know, Bo, but, Bo oh. <laughs> who works for, who runs the Autopian, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he, he runs Galpin. Yes, Bo Bachman, yeah. He got one in, and I reviewed it. And oh. I think he was able to get it in under the show or display clause by convincing them that that particular Signet was the um, debut car at the major, some major auto show, and that particular one deserved to be uh, gotten in. Oh, I've seen on the forums that you could also try to make the argument, if I you have you the could. time and energy, that it is sufficiently equal to a car that was sold in this market, right. which was the Scion, right. not I the Toyota. I think you probably could. Yeah, the Scion. Yeah. The, the, I think you probably could. You probably could. I don't know that I would want to go through don't, the process. Don't go buy a Signet. Mm. I want the Signet. They're expensive now. Have I you, know. Do you look what they cost? Yeah, I'm they're like, expensive. That, okay, that should be a four thousand. I mean, it's the, yeah, it should be a four thousand dollar car. Yeah. <laughs> what was what was it? The Scion I. It was the IQ. IQ, right? It's the IQ. Yep. I see those on the road, and I'm like, ugh. Oh, but you I see the Signet, and you're Martin. like, ooh. But so those IQs are cheap. They're yeah, five, absolutely. eight thousand bucks because yeah. they're little. Yeah. But the Astros are like. 40. They're like 40, exactly. And you look at it and you go, that would be so stupid. But don't, for 40? Don't you think the only so people stupid. buying those at this point are doing it for like as like a meme play? I, I would be doing it as a meme play. There's no Would real, you be doing it as a meme play? Course. Yeah, no exactly. actual good reason. No, right. no. There's no good reason to buy that car. And there was no good reason to buy that car when it existed. Because it existed like 2011 to 2013, right? How many did they sell? Oh, 3,000, 2,000? Oh, Doug. Less than 150. <laughs> Less than 150. They targeted 4,000 a year when it debuted. <laughs> they were like, we're gonna sell 4,000 a year, and it is gonna help our emissions. Right. We're gonna we're gonna have good emissions because we have a city car, and the city car is for elite city people <laughs> to get around the city, and 4,000 of those a year are going to buy it. And three years later, they've sold 150. <laughs> That's probably why they're valuable. I mean, when you yeah. th when you think about it, anything that's sold in such small numbers, wild, absolutely wild, and you don't get the same value from up badging an IQ. No, you don't. And actually, I, I reviewed Bose, and it's a lot. It's more than I was surprised at how extensive the changes were. Yeah, like it was nice. Yeah, I wouldn't nice on the inside. Spend forty grand on it. <laughs> but the powertrain is similar. It hasn't it, completely I don't think unchanged. Was, yeah, I don't think it was they changed. May yeah. have ch if it was changed, I didn't. I know I, I'm not exactly a well versed like, in the IQ, so like, it, for all I know, it was. I don't know. I think it's like 97 horsepower. It was or something really like low that. on yeah, power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was Very really low, low on power. But mm -hmm. like it was nice, like leather everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. His has these flo the floral nice. patterns. For I think some that's. <laughs> Bo, call me. I want it. <laughs> he doesn't want to. I would give it. I would. I would buy that car from him, but. We Not can, for what it's worth. We get, <laughs> That's the problem. We can enter a co-ownership situation, <laughs> just split it in thirds. And I actually think that that would be perfect because that's all you really, you only would really want to drive it around and flex for on people meme. for like a couple of, like yeah. a couple of car shows, yeah. a few weeks. And then after a while you're like, this is not, I don't want, I don't, want, I don't really, I don't want and that's when I send it to you or to Bo in our co-ownership. Yeah. I think this is a wonderful idea, Doug. I, I love that. Part. I think we have an idea. I think it's a. Oh, this... I agree with you, by the way, that they will be valuable in the sense that they made zero of them and they're insane. Thank you. And that I, might as well. I, I would. I think about the signet. It occupies such a large space in my brain, it's and so I just cool. think about it all the time. I really do. Like it's one of the craziest stories in the modern automotive industry. It really is. Happened. It really is. It amazing. I'm excited to hear what you have next. Okay, next up. I'm, everything on my list is not in the 2010s. I, I, when I say 2010s, Doug, I, it was your idea. When I think of the 2010s, I think of like kind of a general time period that lasted from about 2007 from to the now. recession to, to, to now. The new age recession. <laughs> oh, pretty much. That recession 20, to recession. In my mind, the 2010s were about an 18 year period. We're, we're bookended <laughs> by financial disaster. All right, I'll do one that is actually from the 2010s. Oh, this great. can be very controversial. Oh. I love some controversy. The new Acura NSX. Ah, it, Doug, is that from the 20th? Yeah, it came out in 17. <laughs> Boom! Oh, it did come out in 2017. I think. Okay, I think. it did. <laughs> yeah, we're right. <laughs> yeah, that's from the 20th. I forgot that 2017 was like six years ago, not three that's, that's years ago. That's the problem I had when I was doing this. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, yeah, the NSX was 2017 because I, I feel like I drove it in like 2019. Yeah, that's the yeah. 2010s. 
Yes, yes, 17. I don't think that's controversial. I actually think how the NSX was received in modern times was very surprising and controversial. I, I think I think we didn't give it the praise it deserved. That's People a good car. People wanted the analog manual transmission feel but of the it's original. it's so good. It's good. That's, that's, it's so that's good. my argument for yes. it. And the crazy thing about the, the new NSX is they only made 3,000. Yeah. Which means that it's rarer than an 05 Ford GT. Yep. It fits my Lexus IS300 Sport Cross rarity scale. Yeah. I found out somehow that they only made 3,000 Lexus IS300 Sport and Crosses. And that's not your. And for some reason that has become barometer. my like, barometer. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know who told that. I don't even know if that's true. But that's, as a, that's true that is a dumb barometer right there. Yeah. That's where, does it, where does it fall on the IS300 Sport Cross rarity level? That's, That's a car that will never be valuable, by the way. That is incredible. I just think... Doug, you're going to get some emails if it ever... Like, I'm I telling you... Sport Cross owners are probably like, yes! Stop making claims. Someone noticed me. <laughs> um, no, but I think it did not get a good reception, like you said. No, but it, it didn't. is a good car. Yeah. It, it drives well. It does not... It's not like the original. It's not an no. analog, you know, and naturally aspirated. It, it was a hybrid. It was an automatic. Yep. But it was good. And I... it's an accurate, serviceable... Yes. I drove that car um, on track, I think in 2019. And that day I was at the racetrack. We, the whole Jalopnik staff, we just rented out a track for a day. We rented out Monticello Mo yeah. Motor Club. Just, the, the, the heyday of Jalopnik. We were having, we were having a bad time at Jalopnik <laughs> and we just decided we Let's fixed this. Track. We fixed this by going to Monticello and they flew me up to New York to go do this. And I got so sick that morning i was so ill that i couldn't even drive from riding in the cars or from no i went to ihop and i got really bad food poisoning <laughs> it did it hate me that went to ihop that in brooklyn to... <laughs> ihop in brooklyn good that's a that's always gonna be a high quality meal <laughs> So they had to go buy me a bunch of medication. So did you get to drive did you get to I did. I did. I got to drive the NSX and I had no thoughts about the NSX. All I thought was, this is incredible. Yeah. And like, I made no actual observations. I couldn't, I was so sick. <laughs> I had, I was so pale and like clammy. And well, all I knew- you deserve it for going to <laughs> I deserve culinary it. capital of North America and you end up in IHOP. <laughs> That's so true. I went multiple times too. I went back that night um, after I drove the NSX. Um, the, um, the thing about the NSX- <laughs> <laughs> We're back on the NSX. <laughs> is that is that um, I think if you come in with no preconceived notions of what the original car was like. Yes, it's, a, it's you an would incredible the, car. This one, and also I have this deep car. belief that the cars that become valuable later are cars that people hated at the time. Totally, including our friend here. And I really kind of think because they realize they were wrong. They kind of realize, and wrong. and their hatred keeps production numbers low. It does. And that was what and happened then it with the NSX. Valuable. And then it becomes valuable because they only made three three thousand is nothing in terms of like an example. Totally they made twice that many BMW Z8. Totally agree. Yeah. Or and some some a couple of sport crosses num worth of BMW Z8, something in there. And when yeah, there's our, bar our barometer <laughs> back. Um, when I think about that car, I just think about how incredible it was to drive. Again, no details. I have no idea. Like food poisoning. It was fast. It was fun. It's, I think it looks good. It's so good. That There's also a Type a S car. version, which is yes. even rarer. Oh, that yes. wasn't made in the 2010s. That was not made in the 2010s. I remember when that came out. That came out like, like a year ago. A year ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember that. Um, but it's still technically the 2010s because I, we are... We're selling these. We sold a 17 NSX on the site for $111,000. That is just so much car for that money. It's a super Totally car. agree. And it's totally reliable. Agree. And it's only uh, six years old. That that's, a, that's an incredible value. That I is a very good cool. value. I, right. think, I think that's great, Doug. What do you got next? Okay, LC500. I had that on my list. No, oh, we overlapped. And I almost said that. That was yeah. I almost. You said knew that. we were gonna overlap on that one. It's a good. It's a good. So answer. the thing about the LC500 is it looks so good. It yep. looks like a spaceship. Yep. It hasn't needed to conform to modern styling cues to look so good like that car still looks like it's from 2016 or so but in the best way possible like yeah. that car looks incredible the lines are amazing it's so fun to drive you don't even care how heavy it is or how it's a grand tour like you take that out on some fun roads and you're like this is a good car yep and they sold so few of so few and they sell naturally aspirated v8 which naturally is aspirated v8 yep. it, we're gonna miss those because they're gonna go away they sell 1,200 of those a year. They sell 100 right? a month. Really? 100 a month. Because I remember when I wrote about it, I was like, I looked up sales numbers and I was like, 
you've got to be kidding me. Wow, they sell a hundred a month. That came out in eighteen, so I mean they'll end up making ten, fifteen thousand of them, but yes. it's not a, it's not gonna be a big press run. No. I actually have a caveat in my LC. Caveat. I think that the LC that everybody's gonna want. Okay. 24, they've updated it with the new infotainment, so it loses the horrible- The trackpad. The trackpad. And track I pad. always thought to myself, the LC would be such a cool car if it had if it the touch have. screen, but they'll never do that because it's never gonna, they're never gonna be able to justify the update because nobody buys the car, yes. but they did it. They and did I it. suspect that 24, they're gonna end up selling That's... the car for two more years you and know... then cancel it. I, I can't imagine it continues. And so there will be like two years at LC or maybe three that have the good infotainment. That's a caveat that I had not thought of. And I think it's a really good caveat because you were around for this. There was this era where Acura and Lexus were trying so hard to sell us on yeah. the little oh, finger God, trackpad. Oh. And they were like, you can look at the road it's and better. use your it's finger better. on the trackpad. And you're driving this car and you're like doing the circles on the trackpad. And you're oh. like, ah, oh, I think you can't find There was no anything. precision. It was so no precision. bad. And then it'll like kind of, it magnetizes to different yep. things. And you're like, like and your finger just goes, so and you're like, what is happening? And there was a whole era. Yeah. And like Lexus was for late years. Late 2010s. They were just really trying to sell us on track pads or the future. And it's like, no, please just get rid of the track Well, they pad. were telling us that Leave we should love alone. it. We were thinking, this is terrible. And they were telling us all the reasons we should love yeah. it. I remember being in presentations, like I drove the RDX. I went to the RDX launch and they were like, the track pad. And I was like, <laughs> the track pad. Right. That's how everybody thought about it. But the yeah. automakers were insistent that we yes. didn't know what we liked. And yeah. that we should oh, yeah. like what they like. We had no idea what we were doing. So many fights. No, not and the funny, smart. The, first, the funny thing was at the same time that Lexus was doing this, Toyota had touchscreens. So yeah. it was like, it was like, okay, we do get that people like touchscreens. We're still going to try we're to sell you on gonna, the track. We're going to make you feel like you're better for having the track. <laughs> right, pad. right. You can, even like, though you actually, higher class. Knows you're yeah, you're higher class. Okay, Doug, are you going to do one more? Or can I ask a bonus question? Uh, uh, are you going to do can, one more? No, no, go ahead. Okay, bonus question. Does the C7 become loved or hated? You know, that's an interesting question. I think it's going to end up like all the other Corvettes. Okay. I think it'll just, what, are C, what, what has happened to the C5 and the C6? I think that'll happen to the C7. Really? You think, I have heard this theory furthered by some people that okay. because the C7 was the last front engine yeah. with a manual that it will yeah. have its star rise. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's still just a, But I think the other <laughs> side of that is the C6 is that timeless look, like that timeless styling that we saw from the NB Miata, the S2000, all that. We saw these just really nice, like soft, curvy lines. The C6, it's so timeless. Like you look at that car and you go, that's a good looking car. The C7 came out with a bunch of angles and veins and all yeah. of this and looking kind of, you know, like it could go well or go very poorly in 10 years. How do we think it's going to look? Do we think it's going to oh, be ugly? I, mean, I think Corvette styling is weird in that it always looks cool when it comes out and then goes through an ugly duckling period a little and bit. And then it gets and cool And then again. eventually like C3s are starting to get like cool yeah. again when yeah. that car was hated for so long. Yeah. And eventually C4s, mark my words. And C4s, not financial advice. Even C5s maybe someday. Oh. We'll get cool again. But I think C7 will probably follow that same path. The benefit to me that the C7 has yeah. is that it was offered with a manual. And I yeah, think for sure. there is going to be a last gasp with a manual. Oh, for and sure. C7 yeah. was like a good car. And like it was, it was actually a good, yes. fun to drive, good interior. And so... And a manual. It's not just yes. like you're buying a manual because it was the only way to get it. It was like a, you, you bought a manual and you had a good vehicle. But I don't think it's going to like shoot up. They made a billion of them. Yes. The styling but was pretty also, evolutionary. Also, the take rate on the manual, it really declined as the years of the C7 went on. Yep. When the C7 went out of production, Chevy was like, we have no justification yep. for pairing a manual with the mid-engine layout because our take rate had gotten so yep. low. When we first debuted the C7, take rate on the manual was fine. We were doing good. And then toward the end of the C7, no one was buying the yep. manual anymore. Yep. And so, yes, there are a lot of manuals out there because there are a lot of Corvettes out there, but there aren't as many there as There are fewer, think. that's true. Yeah. It's for, certainly compared to like C5s, a lot of the C5s we get submitted yes. are sticks. Yes. Um, I will also say there will be versions of the C7 that will be very valuable. I think sure. the C7 ZR1 is going the to be ZR1. looked at as like a very special car because yes. that was the end of a line of a very cool oh, thing yes. and you could get a stick. 
Yes. And that is going to be like a real, real enthusiast car in a way that yes. other Corvettes, I don't think, quite have been as the years go on. And when you see a ZR1, yeah. it, it really commands yeah. every, like, like not wow. command the room, it commands the parking lot, yeah. it commands everything. And even when it debuted, I remember seeing the debut and I remember the press photos. It was an orange, orange. ZR1 yep. and it debuted with all that power and all that just like, it just, Looks it so kind of cool. takes the breath out of you. It is so cool. Yeah. That, that C7 ZR1. I think Ooh. that car and maybe some of the Z06s yeah. will go down as, oh, yeah. as special cars. For sure. I agree. There you go. That was a good topic. Those are some of our future classics of the 2010s and, and some and other area. Uh, the Porsche 997 Turbo I got on here, that that's ended in 09. Look. Chuck! <laughs> you, you didn't have to mention that. It's the end of the video. 2010s is a, is a, it's a concept more than a, than a structured period. For sure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.